What is going on everyone? This video is about how to create and insert data into a govern table in lake formation using Python with the AWS Data Wrangler library. Now the data we're going to be writing to our new govern table is in S3. Now this data set is currently a CSV that contains animal locations around the world. So you can see that there's a column with the animal name, there's a longitude, latitude, and the date associated with this animal entry. So to get us started, we're going to be importing the data wrangler library. So it is import AWS wrangler as WR for short. Now the first API we're going to deal with is to create our govern table that currently doesn't exist in my AWS environment. So to do this, we're going to be using catalog.create and we're going to be creating a parquet govern table. So we're going to use the parquet table method. Now, the first parameter is going to be database. So which database our new table is going to be in. So the database I'm going to be writing it to is my animals database. Next parameter is going to be the table name. So my table is going to be called animal locations governed. The next parameter is going to be the path to S3, which this data set is going to live in. So we're going to add the path and prefix to this folder. Now, the next parameter is we're going to define the column types of our data set. So we're going to use the column types and we're going to pass a dictionary which has the key value pair of our column and the associated data type. Next, we're going to add compression to our data set. So we're going to use compression and we're going to use snappy compression. So it's going to be snappy as a string. Next, we're going to add a description of our table and I'm just going to call it the animal location table. Now I like to add comments about my columns that I'm creating a table for. So I'm going to pass in the columns underscore comments parameter and make that assigned to a dictionary, which has the column name and the associated string that defines what that column is. As you can see here, I have my five columns that I'm going to be inserting into the database. We just want to make sure we're closing off this dictionary. And finally, the most important parameter is we need to ensure that we're defining this table as a govern table. So the parameter we're going to add is table type. We're going to be making it equal to governed. And let's go ahead and give that a run. Awesome. So I didn't get any errors. So my table has created successfully. So we head over to lake formation. We should now see our newly created table appearing there. And if we click on it, we should see all that information we added through the create parquet table method. So let's just head back to our Jupyter Notebook to actually insert data into our table now. So as I mentioned, this data already exists as a CSV in S3. So what we're going to do is use Data Wrangler to read this into my Jupyter Notebook. So now we can write it as a governed table. So I'm going to define a variable called DF, which stands for data frame. And we're going to use the Wrangler S3 dot read underscore CSV method. And we're just going to pass in the full string to the location in S3, which has our CSV data that we want to read in. Now, if we use the df.head method, we can just take a look at our data to see what it looks like, just to make sure it's as expected. And great, we can see our ID, animal, longitude, latitude, and date. So now that we have it in a pandas data frame, we can now simply write it to our govern table. So I'm going to break this up into two different transactions to show you what it's like to use transactions within a govern table. So instead of just inserting all of our data within our S3 bucket that comes from these CSV files, we're first going to filter our data. So we're going to create a new variable called filtered underscore DF and make that equal to DF, DF dot date is in. And we're going to pass in a list of the dates that we want to filter for. So as you can see, my data set here, we only have two dates coming through. We have December 10th and data on December 9th. So let's just add in date for the December 9th data. So if we quickly take a look at this now using the head method again, we can now see that we're only returning filter data for December 9th. Great. Now that we have a new filtered data frame from our data that we want to insert, the next step is to create a new lake transaction for our governed table. I made a naming mistake, so please disregard the heading that calls it a glue transaction. Now, this is one of the benefits of governed tables is it supports for transactions so multiple users can concurrently and reliably insert data and delete data as well. We're going to go ahead and create a new variable called transaction underscore one. And part of the data wrangler library, we can now use lake formation 
dot start transaction and we're going to set read only to be equal to false now because we're not just querying the data we're actually inserting into it we want to make sure this parameter is false great so now we're going to pass this transaction in to our write method into our govern table but i made a small spelling mistake it's actually start transaction now in our jupyter notebook if we just add this variable and run this line of code, we see we're gonna generate a new transaction. So when we write to our write to our govern table, we're gonna pass this transaction in. We're gonna use the s3 dot two parquet to write to our govern table. So the first parameter is our data frame that we want to write. So we're gonna make that equal to filtered df because we're gonna write the one date of data. We're then gonna pass the path to where we wanna write to. Now, because we're writing to a table, we're going to pass data set is equal to true. And we're going to set compression to be equal to snappy. Database, again, is going to be equal to animals. And then I'm going to pass some extra parameters. So this is going to include in our metadata the number of columns and, and the number of rows, which is coming from our data frame. You can accept the default mode, but I'm going to set the mode to be overwrite, just in case there was any existing data there. I want to overwrite my existing table. And I'm going to set the table type to be governed. And lastly, we're going to add the transaction ID parameter and make that equal to our transaction ID that we just created above. I'm going to reformat this a little bit better just so it looks better. All right, let's give that a run. If everything worked out, this should add our data into our govern table. Just notice I forgot to close off this parameter, so I'm just going to add that there and give that a run. All right, this is a good lesson on what could go wrong. I forgot to pass the table name of my data set. So I'm just going to add in table and make it equal to the table name here. All right, let's give that a run. Great. So we know that ran successfully. We get the path to where we wrote and the name of the file that was written that contains our data frame. Now is a parquet file. Now, because I'm not using partitions, the partition value dictionary is empty. All right, so the next step is to commit our transaction to our govern table. But before we do that, let's just describe our current transaction that we've included here. So we can do wr.lakeformation.describe transaction. And now we're just going to pass in that transaction one. And we're just going to assign it to a variable called transaction. And let's just see what it looks like. Great, so as you can see here, the transaction is still active. So it actually hasn't been committed yet. All right, so now to commit our transaction here, what we can do is run wr.lakeformation. We're going to use the commit transaction parameter, and we're going to pass in that transaction again. Now I want to show you what this described transaction looks like after we commit it. So I'm just going to move this up, add it here, and let's add transaction again below. So now that we should see that the, the transaction uh, state is going to change from active to committed, I believe. Give that a run. All right, awesome. So now we know that that transaction that we applied in our to parquet method is now committed. All right, now let's go ahead and add another date of data into our existing lake formation table now. So I'm going to add another method called filter2. And using the same kind of filtering method I did before, we're just going to pass in the date being the December 10th. And as you remember previously, we passed it in December 9th. So again, we can go up and grab this same method we used before. Just going to paste this into our write additional records here. All right, we're going to make two changes before we commit this method. First, we're going to pass in our new data frame. So instead of uh, filtered data frame, we're going to call it filter data frame two. And now we do not want to use overwrite. We want to make sure we are setting it to append, which is also the default. So we don't want to overwrite our entire table. Actually lied, we're going to make a third change here. We do not want to pass in our old transaction. We want to create a new transaction to insert that in here. So what I'm going to do is add another transaction above. So we're going to call it transaction two here. Um, and we're going to start this transaction. So now that this transaction is active, we're going to paste it into our transaction ID parameter. And we're just going to add another line of code here to commit it. So we're going to 
to wf dot lake formation dot emit transaction and we're going to pass in the name of this transaction all right let's give that a run got a variable error here filter df2 is not defined i forgot to run this line of code so let's just give that a run now that this variable has been created this should run successfully hopefully all right i think we've committed our transaction successfully so let's head over to s3 to see what our data looks like in that s3 bucket all right so now if i refresh my bucket here we now see our second our k file has been added so, so this is great we've successfully committed a second transaction to our govern table all right so now let's head, go ahead and read from our newly created govern table in lake formation so one method to do this is using uh, the read sql command from lake formation so i'm going to assign a new variable called data frame let's call it three because i made a couple data frames already we're going to use wr dot lake formation dot read underscore sql underscore query and now we're going to pass in our sql statement so the sql variable is going to be equal to select all from our current table and the next parameter we need to pass is the database and we're going to make that equal to our animals database and let's use df head to see what the first five records look like all right, so we can see that our data has successfully been queried into a pandas data frame. I should see about 5,000 records if both transactions were successfully committed into our govern table. So I'm going to do df.shape and pass in zero. We run that again. We now have a total of 5,000 records. So, so that's great. Successfully written all the records from CSV into this govern table. All right, so everything I showed you, you could do in a regular table. Let's get to the cool things that you can do with a govern table now. So let's read from our specific transaction that we committed earlier. Let's create a new variable called data frame four, and we're going to be making it equal to wr.lakeformation.readsql query. We're going to pass in the same parameters from before. However, we're going to pass a third parameter called transaction ID, and we're going to pass the first transaction we did when we first inserted data. So we're going to query the table when it existed at the first transaction that we did. So we're going to make this equal to let's just grab the variable, which is called transaction one and assign it to our transaction ID. Next, we're going to add DF dot shape and make that equal to zero to get the total amount of records. So if this runs successfully, we should get around 2,527 records because that's how much was committed on our first transaction. And there you go. Now you can probably imagine all the cool things we can do comparing transactions together, find the difference and do additional analysis between past and present data from a given table. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video or think it's going to be useful for other people learning how to use govern tables in AWS, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on my next video related to govern tables. See you next time.